Welcome once again. In this session, we are studying 1 Peter chapter 1. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ to the chosen ones who are living as foreigners in the dispersion in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, Bithynia, according to the foreknowledge of God the Father in sanctification of the Spirit, that you may obey Jesus Christ and be sprinkled with his blood. Grace to you and peace be multiplied. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his great mercy caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an incorruptible and undefiled inheritance that doesn't fade away, reserved in heaven for you who by the power of God are guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved in various trials, that the proof of your faith, which is more precious than gold that perishes, even though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ." whom, having not known, you love. In him, though now you don't see him, yet believing, you rejoice greatly with joy that is unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Going back to the first paragraph, notice that Peter starts his letter very similar to that of the Apostle Paul, in that he introduces himself, he identifies himself as an apostle of Jesus Christ, and he goes on to, uh, to say, Blessed be God, the God and Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, like Paul did in a few of his letters. But notice, there is a difference here between Peter's letter and Paul's letters. That is, right off the bat, he talks about the sanctification of the Spirit. And right away, he talks about obedience to Jesus Christ. That is what we do not find in Paul's letters, especially in the introduction. So continuing with verse 10. Concerning this salvation, the prophets sought and searched diligently. They prophesied of the grace that would come to you, searching for who or what kind of time the Spirit of Christ which was in them. Notice that it says, the Spirit of Christ which was in them. Don't think that we just have the Spirit of Christ in the so-called New Testament age. They had the Spirit of Christ in the so-called Old Testament. So the prophets who had the Spirit of Christ which was in them pointed to when he predicted the sufferings of Christ and the glories that would follow them. So a common thread that runs throughout the old prophets is the sufferings of Christ and the glories that would follow. I'm thinking especially in the book of Psalms, we read a lot about the sufferings of Christ, not to mention the other books such as Isaiah and Jeremiah and so on and so forth. So when reading the old prophets, all the way from the books of Moses, all the way to the books of the New Testament, always remember that those prophets had the Spirit of Christ. I'm talking about Moses, I'm talking about David, and all of the prophets had the Spirit of Christ, and they spoke by the inspiration of Christ. Now remember, Jesus said, you search the Scriptures. Now that includes the Torah too. And he said, you don't understand that those Scriptures are all about me. If your Jesus does not perfectly reflect that of the books of Moses, the Torah, and all of the other so-called Old Testament Scriptures, then you've got the wrong Jesus. Because remember, Jesus is the Word in the flesh. To them, that is the old prophets, it was revealed that they served not themselves, but you. Think about that for a second. It was revealed to them, to Moses, to David, to Jeremiah, to Isaiah, to all the other prophets, that they didn't serve themselves, but you. To them it was revealed that they serve not themselves, but you. In these things, which have now been announced to you through those who preach the good news to you by the Holy Spirit sent out from heaven, which things angels desire to look into. Wow, the good news, the gospel, the scriptures, the mysteries of God, even the angels desire to look into these things. Therefore, prepare your minds for action. Literally, gird up the waist of your mind, or put on the belt of the waist of your mind. Be sober and set your hope fully on the grace that will be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. 
The revelation of Jesus Christ. This is talking about what we read about in the book of Revelation. It's talking about when Jesus comes back to set this world straight and to reveal, reveal himself to the entire world. So be sober. Set your hope fully on the grace that will be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As children of obedience, not conforming, not conforming yourselves according to your former lusts, as in your ignorance. But just as he who called you is holy, you yourselves also be holy in all of your behavior. Because it is written, you shall be holy for I am am holy. And that is found in Leviticus chapter 11, verses 44 and 45. Notice how Peter here talks about personal holiness. Right off the bat, he talks about being holy. This is a little bit different than the letters of Paul. And don't forget, the apostle Peter has much more authority than Paul. Peter was with Jesus from the beginning. He was eyewitness of everything. He heard the Lord with his very ears. He saw the Lord with his very eyes. He was a witness of the crucifixion, an eyewitness of the resurrection. The apostle Paul wasn't, and he admitted that in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. He said, I'm not even worthy to be called an apostle. He said, I I wasn't even there. And also don't forget, in Acts chapter 1, when they looked for a replacement for Judas, the requirement to be in that 12 apostles. Okay, there's a, there's a difference between the 12, the original 12 apostles, and other apostles. Okay, there's thousands of apostles, but the original 12, the 12 disciples, the one who replaced Judas had to be, according to Acts chapter 1, had to be somebody who was with Jesus from the beginning. Paul wasn't there, therefore he did not qualify to be part of the 12. Although he was an apostle, he wasn't one of the apostles. If you call on him as father, who without respect of persons, in other words, he doesn't play favorites, judges according to each man's work, pass the time of your living as foreigners here in reverent fear. Again, this is a little bit different than the song that Paul sang. Here, Peter talks about personal holiness, reverent fear, obedience, knowing that you were redeemed, not with corruptible things like silver or gold, from the useless way of life handed down from your fathers, but with precious blood, as of a lamb without blemish or spot, the blood of Christ, who was foreknown indeed before the foundation of the world, but was revealed in this last age for your sake, who through him are believers in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope might be in God." Seeing you have purified your souls in your obedience, again, here we talk about obedience, to the truth through the Spirit, in sincere brotherly affection, love one another from the heart fervently, having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, through the word of God, which lives and remains forever. This is the second time the Apostle Peter mentioned born again, We don't read that in the letters of Paul. Verse 24, For all flesh is like grass, and all of man's glory like the flower in the grass. The grass withers and its flower falls, but the Lord's word endures forever. And that is found in Isaiah chapter 40, verses 6 to 8. This is the word of good news, that is the gospel which we preached to you. Recap, the apostle Peter talked about sanctification obedience through the Spirit, obedience to God's commands. He talked about personal holiness. He talked about the blood of the Lamb. And then without going any further, he didn't go down the Roman road of salvation. He didn't go any further than that. And he said, this is the gospel. And isn't it a wonderful privilege to read the writings of the apostle Peter himself, someone who walked and talked with the Lord Jesus himself. That's awesome. Until next time, seek God with all your heart. And if you do, you will find him. Call upon him and he will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.